Hi everyone, welcome to the Swift Arcade. I'm your host, Jonathan Rasmussen. In this week's episode, I wanna take a look at something that's really fundamental, that's really gonna help you build and do more advanced things in iOS, and that's called core graphics. In this episode, I'm gonna show you two different ways to draw core graphics and add them to your iOS apps. I'm gonna to explain to you the fundamentals of how iOS core graphics work, and all of this is gonna enable you to do more advanced things, do really cool, animations, layouts, and really understand fundamentally how things happen on the screen in UIKit. So with that, come on in and let's get a good solid introduction to this thing called Core Graphics. All right, so what is Core Graphics? Core Graphics is Apple's library for drawing things on the screen. Every shape, every image you see on a screen is powered by core graphics. This is why it's kind of good to know. In the Apple ecosystem, if you've been working in iOS, you've probably noticed that most of your work has been done in a library called Coho Touch or UI Kit. So when we create UI table view controllers, UI view controllers, UI image views, UI buttons, we're always working up here in UI Kit. But underneath that is a library that starts with the acronym CG. Whenever you see CG, you know you're working with core graphics. And check this out. This is how old core graphics is. This is the document revision history for the core graphics documentation by Apple. It's completely up to date, but look at when they actually started editing this. It's almost at the birth of the web back in 2001. But it's even older than that because this is technology that Apple bought from Next when Steve Jobs came over and joined Apple. So the point I'm making here is this is an extremely mature, extremely refined, powerful library, and it powers everything on our phone. And you still use it and see it in iOS today. Now, how does it actually work? Well, basically, what you do when you're working with core graphics, the traditionally, is you override the draw rect function in a UI view. So if we had a custom UI view here, we would define a view. There's a function here called draw rect. This is what we'd override, and this is where we would do our core graphics work. So core graphics work is drawing images. This is where we could come in and define a rectangle, set its fill color to be red, set its stroke color to be green. That's the border. We could set things like line widths. We then take those rectangles, add them to something called our context, and this is where we do all the Context is basically the configuration that holds the state of what's actually going to be painted on the screen. And we say we'd like to add, say, this rectangle to the context and then fill it in. That's how we would draw a red square with a green border. If we wanted to draw a yellow circle, we would define another rectangle, specify its X and Y position, its width, give it some colors for fill and stroke, set its line width, and then draw, in this case, we would add an ellipse to the context for a circle here and add that and fill that in. So that's that's one way we can go about working with core graphics in UIKit, create a custom view, then override the draw func. But there's another way we can go ahead and do this. And if you're scouring the internet and looking for examples on core graphics, this is what I found a little bit confusing. There's a couple ways of doing it. The other way is to load in a core graphics image via a plain old UI image view. So we could define, so here I'm in a view controller. I'm just gonna define a UI image view. And then here we use a helper function to get us the context, this UI graphics image renderer. This gives us a renderer, which in its callback will pass to us something that holds the context. And then we can do our core graphics work in here, actually drawing a UI image, and then set that on the image view itself down here. So at high level, those are just two different ways we can go ahead and create images, load them up into our view controllers in our views. And it looks really simple, and it is, but there's a few gotchas. So why don't we jump into the lab now and create one of these things from scratch? All right, so let's create a brand new app project here. Let's call this uh, Core Graphics Fun. And let's just go ahead and accept all the defaults there. Feel free to save it wherever you like. I'm just gonna throw this on my desktop. And I'm not gonna bother getting rid of the storyboards today. We'll just go ahead and work with what we've got. Maybe the one thing I will do is I'm just gonna create a new group without folder here. 
get rid of all the files that we don't really care about. So we can just focus on the stuff I really want you to see, which is just going to be this view controller where we're going to do our work. And let's go in there now. And let's start with the very first most basic thing we can do when we're starting with core graphics. Let's just draw a simple, let's create a simple view and do some core graphics work around there. So let's come up here. I'm going to define a view which doesn't exist right now. This is going to be called my view. This is going to be a custom UI view we're going to create. And just to get this thing compiling, why don't we come down here and define it? Let's go class my view, plain old UI view. And so this is the first thing to understand. So we're going to create this view. We're going to do our custom drawing down here in a CG rect. But let's first of all just get our view into our view controller. So here we're still firmly in UI kit land. We can still do all of our regular UI kit stuff. So let's just go ahead and give this view a, um, let's set our parent view, the view that corresponds with this view controller. Let's give it a background color just so we can help separate what is us and what is not us. So I'm just gonna give this a system gray background five, just a sort of a light gray background. And let's take this my view thing we're gonna be working with and let's just do this with straight up auto layout. Let's just set our auto layout constraint flag to be false. That enables our view to do auto layout. And then let's go ahead and just add this view we've created to our view as we typically do just when working with view controllers and views. And then let's come in here and just do some auto layout. And I'm just going to copy in some code to speed this up. But let's just take a look at what we're doing here. This is gonna be my view. And all we're gonna do here is we're gonna center this view into the middle of our view controller by using our X and Y centering constraints here. We're also gonna hard code and give this view a explicit width and height of 400 by 400. And then I'm just gonna print the bounds. This is just handy so you can see what the size is of your phone. Core Graphics is very, very specific. It likes to know exactly where things are. So sometimes I find it handy to print out the size of my view area, in this case, the screen. And, and before we run this, let's just give my view a background color here. Let's give it something like, um, I don't know, something funky like uh, cyan, just so we can see where this is showing up on our screen. And I'm gonna run this using the iPhone 11 Pro Max. And I'll explain why. I just want to know exactly what my size area is. And I just want a bit of a bigger canvas. Let's just run this, get the simulator up and see what we got. Okay, so here we have exactly what we'd expect, which is nothing too special right now. We just have a cyan view. This is my custom view. It's there, there's nothing in it. We haven't added any core graphics yet. Let's now go ahead and do that. So coming down to my view here, let's go ahead and just set this up. So let's just give this some overrides, which we typically need when we're working with custom UI views. So this is just the override that takes in, look at this, CG rect. There's core graphics right there. Um, we're not gonna take, we could specify the rec to draw this view if we want, but we're not going to. We're gonna specifically lay it out ourselves. This is just a required initializer we need, NS coder. If we're working with storyboards, this is how this view would hydrate and save itself to disk. But let's go down here and do the fun, interesting thing, the thing we're all here for, and let's override this draw rect function. So in here, this is where we're gonna do our CG core graphics work. We're gonna override this function, we're gonna draw our shapes, lay things out. So let's start by doing the one thing that we need if we're gonna do any drawing, and that is getting this thing called a context. Everything in core graphics is driven by context. You can almost think of this as your palette. When you're setting colors, when you're setting widths, and you're kind of controlling what you wanna see drawn, Context is the state or the object that contains all this stuff. So we always need to start with a context and this is how we're gonna get it. Now the next thing we do when working with core graphics is we need to define our canvas or basically our, our painting area. So in this case, I'm gonna go ahead and just draw 
out or define a canvas starting at the origin point 00, zero with the width of 200 by 180. So what we're gonna draw here is this is gonna be our square. We're just gonna start by drawing a plain square and this is defining our canvas. Here's the origin, here's the width, and here's the height. Now watch what happens. Let's just get something going here. Let's set some properties on our rectangle that we're going to draw. Specifically, let's set the fill color. Let's say we'd like our, uh, our square to be red. We're gonna set the stroke color to be green. Notice here, we can use UI kit colors, but we need to get another color behind the scenes. This is called the CG color, and this is the one that breaks it into the more of an RGB style format. So that's just one subtle difference between UI kit and core graphics. Here we have to go one layer down because remember when core graphics was created, UI kit wasn't around. It's, it's way older than UI kit. So this is how we specify the UI kit's color and pass that into a core graphics object. Then we're gonna set the line width. We're going to add our rectangle to our context. And then we're gonna draw the path. We're gonna say, hey, draw this thing out using this option here called fill stroke. There's lots of different things we can do here. There's lots of different ways we can fill it. We could fill, we could clip, we could do all sorts of different things. These are just enums, different drawing modes and core graphics. And then we're just gonna fill it in. We're just gonna paint it in and there we go. So let's just run this and see what happens. We defined our square, we've overridden draw, and there we go. Okay. I'm gonna just add one more little bit of code here, which I'm gonna explain what this does later at the end of the episode. And it's quite important because it trips up young people, but I'm just gonna inset this square a bit to give it a little, I'm gonna push it a little bit more into the boundaries of a rectangle. And there we go. A red square with a green border sitting in our view. Now just for kicks, I wanna get rid of this cyan here just because it's kind of burning my eyes a bit. Let's run this again. And the thing I want you to appreciate here is that we've defined a view. So this black area, this is the view we defined up here. And we've set its constraints in auto load to be 400 by 400. So just understand we're controlling this size of this parent view with auto layout. But in here, we have full control over how core graphics is gonna work. So that's what's going on in there. And look at this. This zero, zero corresponds to this origin right in the upper left-hand corner here. So when we draw this out, don't be confused into thinking that the middle of your shape that you're drawing is, is right here. It's always this upper left. And the coordinate system for core graphics goes down and to the right. So it's increasing X, increasing Y. This is zero, zero, width of 200, height of 180. All right, let's go in here and let's just repeat it with, and let's get a circle in there. And the thing I want you to note when we draw this circle is two things. One, Core Graphics uses this thing called the painter's model. Painter's model means whenever you're painting with Core Graphics, you're always overlaying what's already on the page. In other words, when we go in there and draw a circle, which we're gonna do with this code here, we can't go back and change the square. That's already been painted onto the canvas. All we can do is change our palette change the colors, change our stroke width, change our shape and draw it. But kind of what's been painted has already been done. So that's just something to understand. It's called the painter's model. We're continuously painting on our canvas. So here, watch what happens with this. We're gonna define our canvas as a CG rect with an X of 256, a Y of 256, a height and a width. Where do you think this is gonna appear on this image now? This is the origin up here, zero, zero. We've defined our square of zero, zero with this height and this width. Where do you think this is gonna go? Well, 256, 256 in, it's gonna appear somewhere down here. And it's gonna have a height and a width with these colors. Let's run it and see what happens. Voila, there's our circle. And this is the thing I want you to appreciate, the origin of the circle, the 256, 256 is right around here. So just understand how the coordinate system works. That's one thing I really found confusing when I first got started with core graphics. Origin is here. It defines the position in terms of X, Y, and then your height and width go from there. And in this case, we have a yellow circle with a line width like that, and voila. There you go. If you've been following along and you type this out, you should now see this. You've just drawn your very first core graphics image. 
in an iOS app. Congratulations. Now, of course, there's another way that we can also draw core graphics in UIKit, and that's to load things in via an image view. So I know this is amazing work we've done. Feel free to go ahead and save this. And don't worry, I've got all of this also in my website. You can come back here and download this code and run it anytime. But let's go in here and let's just start again. And I want to show you another way of loading things into uh, UIKit using core graphics. And that is, used to, that is to use this thing called the UI image view. So we're going to do something very similar, but this time instead of creating our own custom uh, UI view, we're just going to use a plain old UI kit image view. So we're going to create an image view. We're going to, again, use auto layout. We're going to add it to our sub view. We're just going to put it right in the middle of our view here. We're then going to come down here and define a function called draw circle. This is where we will do our fun core graphics work. But I just want to I want you to appreciate what's going on here. Let's just run this. And what we'll see in our simulator here is absolutely nothing, which is expected because image views themselves, they don't contain anything and they don't size themselves until you give them an image, which is exactly what we're gonna do down here in Draw Circle, a different way of loading in an image. In this case, the image view is gonna be our container. So let's come down here now and let's actually bring in and draw do some core graphics and draw an image that we can insert into our image view. So let's start by just getting what we always need. We eventually want to get the context because that's how we do our drawing. But in this case, UIKit gives us a nice convenience routine called UI Graphics Image Renderer. And this thing gives us something which can give us a core graphics content. Actually, what it does is it gives us a, there's a method we could call on it called renderer image. And what this does is this lets us create an image via a callback. So we're gonna create our image down here. This is where we're gonna do our core graphics work. And this thing here contains our core graphic. This is where we're gonna get our core graphic from. And we're just gonna do our work in there. So the first thing we're gonna do is let's just define the canvas that we want to draw in. Again, it's gonna be a CG rect. We're gonna start right in the upper uh, left hand corner, zero, zero. In this case, we're gonna draw another circle with a width of 400 and a uh, height of 400. Stay tuned, I wanna get into this in just a little bit. I'm not gonna punt on that anymore, but for now, I'm just gonna leave it in there. You'll see why in a second. And then let's go in there and just fill and stroke our circle. So to do that, we just do our fun core graphics work here. We get the context from this CTX container, which holds it for us. We're gonna set the fill color. We're gonna set the stroke color, set the line width. Let's make this a bit thicker. I'm gonna make this 20 and I'm gonna make these 10 and you'll see why in a second. And this won't quite work yet because what we haven't done is while this, what this does is this gives us an image but now we need to set that image into our image view. This is kind of where the magic happens. We take our image container view and we go, hey, image, I'd like you to be the image that we just created here. So that's how we can take our core graphics image from this image renderer and put it into our image view. So if we run this, hey, nice. We get a, a circle with a line width of 20. It's black, the circle's red, it looks beautiful. Okay, now pay attention. I'm gonna show you the one thing that trips up just about everybody when they first get started with core graphics. This really tripped up me. I wanna show you what happens when I remove this little thing called inset by here, and we go to draw our circle with an origin up here of zero, zero, and a height and width of 400. Watch what happens when we draw this. Whoa, what just happened there? Our circle is clipped. Part of it is inside Part of our borders inside, part of our borders outside. What's going on here? This is the thing that was really confusing for me when I first got started in core graphics, and it all has to do with set line width. If you look at the documentation of set line width, you'll notice that what it says in there is that when you set the width of the line and you're going to draw it, the default value is one. So if we didn't specify it, we would always have a value, it'd be one. 
But when stroked, or when this thing is painted, the line straddles the path with half of the total width on either side. That's what's going on here. And this is what totally confused me. If you remember way back when we did a Starbucks app, and we had to build a custom graph in there to show how many reward points uh, you had gotten for drinking coffee. And we did it with core graphics. And this is the thing that really tripped me up. I couldn't figure out why my shapes were always getting clipped. And, and it's basically because of the straddling thing. So the way we fix this is we can take our rectangle and we can inset it by basically half the width of our line width. So here's a quick image I created just to show this. If our line width is 20 points, half is drawn on the inside, half is drawn on the outside, we just take our set line width value of 20 here and we half it. And that's what we can do to use our inset by here. That's how we can get around this. So in our case, line width of 20, inset by 10, that will, if we add that back and we rerun this, that will bring everything inside the rectangle. Our circle will be completely flesh, nothing will be clipped, and life will be good. Okay, now I know what you're thinking. Jonathan, this isn't exactly blowing my socks away. I mean, it's really nice that you can create circles and squares, but why are we even learning this? I mean, can't I do everything in UIKit? And the answer is yes, you can. But the reason why I wanted to get into core graphics and show this to you is that later on, I'm gonna be getting into some core animation stuff and you really need to understand a couple things around core graphics if you wanna animate things using something called core animation, which we're gonna get into in a couple of videos later. The main takeaways from here, if you remember nothing else, is one, understand how the coordinate system for core graphics works. This is just really handy even if you're working in UI kit. If you ever need to drop down in that CG layer, understand the origin is in the upper left-hand corner and everything flows from there. In iOS, it's increasing down into the right. And then secondly, just understand how things get straddled with this path. Now that you know that half will get drawn inside the path and half will get drawn out, you'll know how to deal with that and you won't be confused when you need to go draw some shapes. Okay, well there you have it. That's how Core Graphics works. Those are kind of the basics around how you actually go about and draw things with Core Graphics. Uh, if you want to learn more about Core Graphics and how we're going to use those in animations, uh, do hit like, do hit subscribe. I've got some other videos around taking this information and using it for animations, which we're going to be doing later. But uh, if nothing else, at least you've got a basic understanding of how Core Graphics works. You won't be intimidated when you see CG come up in your iOS programs. And just appreciate the beauty of this library, which has been around for over 20 years, powering everything we do on our phones. And if you're serious about getting into iOS development, I think it's a good thing to just brush upon and know how it works. Okay, thanks so much for coming, everyone. I hope you enjoyed that. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.